Since taking over Chelsea, Todd Bowley has bought 28 players with 17 of those coming in the last two transfer windows at a total cost of 641 million. Bowley has spent almost one billion pound in less than two years already. Maurizio Pochettino was hired as Chelsea manager in the summer of 2023 and his performance so far has been less than stellar as the club currently sit in 10th place in the league with 8 wins, 4 draws and 8 defeats in their opening 20 games. The average managerial tenure in the Premier League is 743 days with the average Chelsea manager lasting just 437 days meaning that Pochettino's days in charge of Chelsea could be numbered. And this is where we begin the rebuild. We are taking over Chelsea as of the 1st of January 2024. We are using the custom database and the custom start date file that's created by the guys over on the FMRTE website. An incredible addition to the game to simulate real life. With the average Premier League managerial tenure being just over two years, we're going to take charge of Chelsea for two and a half seasons to see how we get on. We may extend beyond that depending on any success that we may have. So let's get a look at the first half season and see how we get on. And so I've taken charge of Chelsea. Todd Bowley has welcomed us, of course, to the club. And as we can see, our media prediction is to finish in sixth in the league. Chelsea do have a very strong squad of players. Of course, some players are out on loan currently, such as Hakim Ziyech is currently on loan with Galatasaray, with his move becoming permanent in the summer. Kepa Arifa Blaga is on loan at Real Madrid, but he is a player I'll be looking to use next season. And Romelu Lukaku, currently on loan with Roma, is a player I will certainly be looking to sell in the summer to raise some transfer funds. I have built a tactic specifically for this Chelsea team and this rebuild. As we see, we have a sweeper keeper on defend duty. We have two wing backs on either side with two ball playing central defenders all on defend duty. We have a defensive midfielder just in front on support duty with a box to box midfielder and a deep line playmaker both on support duty just in front as well. On both flanks we have wingers on attack duty and up front we have an advanced forward on attack duty as well. Going forward the key players in this team will be Rhys James, Levi Colwell, Enzo Fernandez, Moises Caicedo, Michaelo Mudrick and Nicholas Jackson. We decided not to do any transfer business in the January window and use the team that we have available to us so let's fast forward to the end of the season and see how we get on. First season didn't get off to the best starts with a 2-1 defeat at home to Fulham followed by a 2-0 defeat away to Liverpool in the opening two league games. Of the 16 games that followed in the league we did manage to win 12 and draw 1 with the most notable results coming in a 4-1 win against Spurs, a 3-2 win against Newcastle, a 1-1 draw with Manchester United and a very good 3-2 win away to Arsenal at the Emirates Stadium. Those results did see us progress up the table but a 3-1 defeat to Aston Villa saw us drop down two positions and on the final day of the season we managed to pip Newcastle into 7th place by virtue of goal difference beating them by only two goals to qualify for the Europa Conference League. In the FA Cup we started the third round with a 2-1 victory away from home against Bournemouth before travelling to St Andrews where we beat Birmingham City 1-0 in the fourth round. We travelled to the Midlands again in the 5th round but unfortunately came away with a 2-0 defeat to Aston Villa. Chelsea were knocked out of the Carabao Cup before I even took charge of my first game. In the 2nd round we won 2-0 at home to Fulham before another home tie against Swansea City in the 3rd round where we won 4-1. Another home tie followed against Brentford where we won 1-0 in the 4th round before a quarter final tie which was our first away game of the campaign losing 2-1 to Nottingham Forest. And so our first half season has been relatively successful. We have qualified, of course, for European football next season. So let's jump into season two and see how we get on. Season two, our first full season in charge of the club has proved to be very successful. But before we look at the competitions and how we get on, let's have a look at the transfer business we did this summer. It has been a busy summer of transfer activity as Lewis Hall completes his move to Newcastle for 28 million, which was already predetermined. Hakim Ziyech has joined Galatasaray on a free transfer, and the first of our big names to go out the door is Alex de Sassi, unknown to Manchester United. Shortly after that, Malang Sar moved to Crystal Palace for 5.5 million, while youngster Ishe Samuel Smith has gone to Brentford for a deal worth 7.5 million, potentially 11.5 million. Raheem Sterling was unhappy at missing out on Champions League football and when Real Madrid offered £57 million, we jumped at the chance to remove Sterling's £350,000 wages off the books. 
The next big name to go out was Trevor Shalaba, moving to Al Halal for 47 million. And promising youngster Jimmy J. Morgan has moved to Newcastle in a deal initially worth 5 million, potentially rising to 16.75. Thiago Silva was the next player to leave, moving to Rennes for 2 million, while Diego Moreira has moved to Brighton in a deal worth 8.75 million, potentially rising to 10.5. Romelu Lukaku was the next player to leave, going to Al Etifak in a deal worth 37 million, which was his release clause price. And the final big names to leave were Dordi Petrovic on loan to Brighton and Mark Kukurea on loan to Nottingham Forest. In terms of incoming players, we spent big on Jeremy Pino. He had a 69 million pound release clause, so we activated that. We then needed to strengthen in defense, so we brought in Lucharel Gertrida from Feyenoord for 57 million, and also brought in Strahinia Pavlovic from RB Salzburg for 17 million, potentially rising to 19.5 million. I've decided to change the tactic for this season, going with a 4-4-2, you might call it a 4-2-4, to try and make use of the attacking options that we have. This is a tactic that I created in Football Manager 2022, which has proved to be very successful for me in FM23 as well. Our opening games of the league season didn't see us get off to a great start, with a 1-1 draw at home to Crystal Palace, a 2-1 defeat away to Brentford. We had a very good 5-1 win against newly promoted Leicester, but we then lost 1-0 to Man City. We start the FA Cup campaign with a third round tie away to Northampton, where we come home with a 5-0 victory thanks in part to a hat-trick from Cole Palmer. In the fourth round, we take on Middlesbrough at the Riverside Stadium, where we win 2-1 despite Madrid missing a penalty in the first half. And in the fifth round, we host Man City at Stamford Bridge, where we win 3-2, before a quarter-final tie also at Stamford Bridge against Newcastle, seeing us win 5-2. We go into the FA Cup semi-final against our bogey team Aston Villa but come away with a 3-2 victory, seeing us through to the final against Nottingham Forest at Wembley. In the final we open the scoring through Nicholas Jackson getting on the end of a lovely three ball from Enzo Fernandez to make it 1-0. Followed by Michaelo Mudrick making a nice break down the left hand side as it cuts inside the box he evades the challenge of Nico Williams, cuts back onto his right foot and fires low and hard into the bottom corner to make it 2-0. In the 85th minute, a lapse in concentration between Moz Caicedo and Levi Cole will allow Chris Wood in to steal the ball, get around Kepa and give us a late scare, but we managed to hold on for the win and win our first trophy of this rebuild. We started our Europa Conference League campaign with a qualifying round against SK Brand, winning 4-1 away from home but losing 1-0 at Stamford Bridge, going through 4-2 on aggregate. In the new league phase format of the Europa Conference League, we won 7-2 against Basel, we won 8-1 against Torpedo Kutaisi, we had an incredible 12-0 win over Icelandic side Breda Blick before a 3-1 victory against Anderlecht, followed by a 1-0 draw against Marseille and finally a 4-1 victory against FC Twente. We finished top of the league phase with the results against Basel, Torpedo and Breda Blick, giving us a huge goal difference over Marseille and Atalanta who also finished on 16 points. In the round of 16 knockouts, a 1-0 away win and a 5-2 home win against Slavia Prague saw us through with a 6-2 aggregate score. We then go into the quarterfinals against Marseille who finished second in the league phase, losing the first leg 1-0 away from home but winning the home leg 4-0 give us a 4-1 aggregate score. And that saw us into the semi-final where we then faced Atalanta who of course finished third in the league phase. We did win 3-2 away against Atalanta but we lost 1-0 at home, taking us into extra time and eventually into penalties. We did win the penalty shootout 5-4 with Rafael Toloi missing the all-important final penalty to see us through to the final. We take on German side Hoffenheim in the Europa Conference League final and we open the scoring in the third minute with Nicholas Jackson scoring from just outside the edge of the box before Kaderabek makes a breakdown our left hand side, crosses the ball across the face of goal, finds Kramaric at the back post to make it one all. Moises Caicedo finds Enzo Fernandez in midfield who makes a driving run past two defenders as he makes his way into the box to give us the lead at half time. In the second half, Christopher Nkunku scores a penalty to make it 3-1 before a back post header from Marco John pulls Hoffenheim back into the game, 
3 2. But Christopher and Kunku seals the victory with another penalty, sending the keeper in the opposite direction this time as we beat Hoffenheim 4 2. And so we win our second trophy of this rebuild and our first European trophy, which also qualifies us for next season's Europa League. Our Carabao Cup campaign isn't quite as successful as we start with a third round tie against Stoke winning 3-0 before a fourth round tie against Bournemouth away where we also win 3-0. That takes us into a quarter-final tie against Spurs at home where we draw 3-3 in normal time going to a penalty shootout losing 4-2 on penalties with Jeremy Pino and Nicholas Jackson missing the all-important penalty kicks. We did have some very good results during the season, however losing games to Brentford, West Ham, Bournemouth and twice against Sheffield United were particularly hard to take. The best results we recorded this season were a 6-1 victory away to Fulham, a 7-0 victory at home to Hull City, a 3-1 victory at home to eventual runners-up Manchester United and an incredible 5-1 win against Arsenal at home. Our league form didn't start off the greatest and it wasn't until about a third of the way through the season when we really started to pick up form as we eventually finished in 5th place in the league, qualifying for the Europa League just one point behind Newcastle in the top four. However, the UEFA coefficients have seen England gain an extra place in the Champions League, meaning that our 5th place finish will put us into the Champions League for next season. So season two has been a season of progress. Of course, we have won two trophies along the way as well. We're going to go into season three now, which could be our final season at the club and see how we get on. And so season three has been another very good season where we've made more progress. We're going to look at the competitions in just a moment. But first of all, we're going to have a look at the FIFA World Club Cup and then the transfer business that we carried out this summer. We entered the Club World Cup and we got off to a very good start with a 3-1 win against FC Porto, followed by a 5-0 win against Urawa and finally a 4-0 win against Seattle in the group stage. That took us through to the second round where we faced off against Real Madrid. Of course Raheem Sterling would score a 90 plus 6th minute equaliser to take us in the extra time, but David Washington popped up in the 94th minute to score the goal that would take us through to the next round. In the next round we face Palmeiras in the quarterfinals and we win the game 3-1 thanks to goals from Nani Marueki and Datro Fafana. Unfortunately after this result we did sell our two first choice goalkeepers uh, but unfortunately our new first choice goalkeepers didn't come in in time before the semi-final against PSG. Therefore we had to play a 17 year old goalkeeper for his first senior game and unfortunately PSG proved too strong for us as they ran away with a 6-2 victory. There was another flurry of outgoing transfer activity. As mentioned previously, Robert Sanchez has left for Aston Villa for 10.5 million. This occurred between the quarter-final of the Club World Cup and the semi-final, therefore he was not at the club able to play in the semi-final. We also sold Ian Matson to Leeds for a fee of 20.5 million and both of these transfers count towards last season's transfer business. For the outgoings of this season, Kepa Arifa Blago was sold for 21 million, rising to 26.5 to Brighton. This also occurred between the games against Palmeiras and PSG. Alex de Sassi was the next big name player to move on. He moved to Al Nasser in Saudi Arabia for 36 million, before Armando Brogia secured his move to Sheffield United for 42.5 million. A number of other players have also gone out on loan, including Angelo, Ugo Chirgua, and Pavlovich with Mark Kukare joining Leeds unknown with an option to buy for 12.5 million. Karni Chukwameka has also moved to Saudi Arabia, moving to Al Ali for 9.5 million, before Ben Chilwell moved to Real Madrid unknown for the season with an option to buy of 52 million. In incoming transfers, we did make a deal with Brighton of 35 million to bring in Bart Verbergen, and we also made a deal to bring in James Trafford from Burnley for 33 million. Both of these transfers couldn't occur before the semi-final against PSG, unfortunately. In other incomings, there was the pre-agreed transfer of Kendry Paez from Independiente for 17.25 million. And with a 56 million fee release clause, we needed strength in our left back position. So we made a move for Teo Hernandez from AC Milan. 
We take on Man City in the Community Shield, and as we see, we take an early lead as Jeremy Pino finds a nice pass through to Nicholas Jackson, who tucks it away first time to make it 1-0. Cavardeskula then equalises from the penalty spot before Christopher Nkunku whoops in a free kick, which is only partially cleared to Mikhailo Madrid, who fires home into the bottom corner. Later on in the game, Rhys James whoops in a corner, which is met at the front post by Geertruida, who makes it 3-1 as we lift our first community shield of the rebuild. In this year's Carabao Cup we record a very nice 6-2 victory at home to Doncaster in the third round before beating Brentford 4-0 away in the fourth round. We go into the quarter final against Aston Villa but yet again come unstuck as they beat us 2-1. We were leading for the most part until Jacob Ramsey equalised in the 86th minute and Luca Dinha scored the winner in the 90 plus fourth minute. We entered the FA Cup in the third round with a 7-2 victory at home to non-league AFC Field. We moved into the fourth round where we faced Liverpool coming home with a 3-2 victory and we beat Spurs in the fifth round 3-1 away from home. That took us into the quarter final where we took on Brighton. We were leading 2-0 within the first three minutes but a hat-trick from Atoma and even a goal from Tongi on Dembele saw us lose 6-2. Our Champions League campaign started with two home games where we drew 1-1 with Borussia Dortmund and beat Inter Milan 3-0. The next four games were all away ties where we beat Slavia Prague 2-0, we beat Ajax 3-0, we lost 1-0 to Roma at Stadio Olympico, of course Tammy Abraham would score the winner against us, and we beat Benfica 1-0 as well. The final two games of the league phase were played at home where we beat Dinamo Zagreb 8-1 and we beat Real Sociedad 2-0. The final of the league phase table shows us gain automatic qualification to the round of 16 as we finish with 6 wins, 1 draw, 1 defeat and finishing on 19 points. The round of 16 sees us drawn against Newcastle with a 2-2 draw in the first leg away tie and a 5-2 win in the second leg home tie seeing us through 7-4 on aggregate. We move into the quarter finals of the Champions League where we face Benfica who of course we played in the league phase earlier and a 3-1 win at home in the first leg was enough to see us through as we drew 0-0 in the second leg in Lisbon. We faced Bayern Munich in the semi-finals of the Champions League with the first leg at home drawing one all give us a little bit of confidence but a 2-1 defeat in Munich seen us crashing out at the semi-final stage and a 3-2 aggregate score with Bayern Munich going on to win the final 3-1 in extra time against Roma. In the Premier League some of our best results of the season came at home with a 4-0 win against Spurs, a 3-0 win against Arsenal, a 3-1 win over Liverpool and an incredible 5-1 win against Manchester City. We had a very good run of results this season including a 13 game undefeated streak between November and February. However our away record was not so good but we did manage to maintain a top 3 position for most of the season where unfortunately a 4-3 defeat to Wolves saw us drop down to 4th place and we had to crawl our way back up into second place from there. The result against Wolves could be the one that cost us the title as we finished only two points behind Liverpool. Of course it could have been any one of the three draws against all three teams who were relegated this season. So season two has been very good for us. Of course we are disappointed to miss out on the league title by just a couple of points. We're going to move forward into the summer transfer window and see if we can strengthen the team and hopefully next season we can go on to make a title challenge and hopefully even win the Premier League. After signing a new contract extension we've decided to change up our formation for the new season. This tactic is called the broken tap and you can find it on our tactics testing series as we look to take advantage of all the attacking influences that we have amongst the team. It has been a very good season for us and we will look at our progress in just a moment. First of all we're going to have a look at the transfer business that will be concluded this summer. We had a busy summer in the transfer window as we sold Mark Cucurea to Leeds making his loan move permanent in a deal worth 12.5 million followed by Ben Chilwell who also made his loan move permanent in a deal worth 52 million to Real Madrid. Cole Palmer was next out the door as he moved to Wolves for 22 million and Jordi Petrovic moved to Man City for a deal worth 11 million pounds. Malo Gusto moved to Sheffield United for 21 million, rising up to 28.5 million. While Charles Gertida was unhappy and wanted to leave, so he moved to AC Milan for 65 million. 
Cesare Casadei was the next to leave as he moved to Middlesbrough for 15 million and Omari Hutchison moved to Southampton for 4.8 million. The last big outgoing transfer was Leslie Ogachukwu moving to Al Riyadh in a deal worth 26 million pounds. Our incoming transfer business saw us spend big money as we brought in Anatoly Trubin from Benfica in a deal worth 40.5 million. We brought in Giorgio Scalvini from Atalanta for 63 million, rising up to 83 million. And the biggest transfer of the summer was, of course, Javi coming in from Barcelona for 113 million pounds. Our Premier League campaign gets off to an OK start with a 2 1 win at home to Liverpool, a 1 all draw away to Arsenal a 1-1 draw at home to Aston Villa and unfortunately a 3-0 defeat at home to Brighton. We do record some very good results during the season and go on two runs undefeated, one of 13 games and towards the end of the season a run of 12 games without defeat as well. Some of the best results we've had this season are a 6-0 win at home to Southampton, a 2-0 win away to Spurs, a 2-0 win at home over Arsenal and a 3-0 win at home against Man United. With two games left to play we prepare to take on our bogey team Aston Villa and as we can see from the league table we're currently sitting three points ahead of Tottenham knowing that only a draw is good enough for us to win the league. Even if we do lose this game we can still pick up a point in our final game against Man City. And so we prepare for the game against Aston Villa. As the game kicks off Javi finds Mudrik who makes a run forward, finds Christopher Nkunku who goes one on one with the goalkeeper and makes no mistake to give us a 1-0 lead. Soon after Reese James picks up a poor clearance as the ball finds its way to Fofana who finds Mudrik who has allowed too much time to turn and finds the bottom corner. Teo Hernandez makes a break down the left hand side but as his cross is cleared it comes to Reese James who finds Jeremy Pino making a turn onto his left foot to make it 3-0. Towards the end of the game Nkunku makes a break down the left wing as he cuts back inside plays the ball across to Mudrik finding Enzo Fernandez who fires home to make it 4-0. And so we finally done it after three and a half years in charge at Chelsea. We have finally won our first Premier League title. And as we can see from the graph, after a slow start in the league, we managed to pick ourselves up as we sat top of the table from week 16 all the way through to the end of the season with only one dip in game week 20. And so we win the league by a clear six points over Spurs. We had that three point advantage of course before the Aston Villa game as Spurs won their final game against Brighton on the last day of the season. We beat Man City 2-1 as well. Our Carabao Cup campaign starts with a 6-1 home win in the third round against Blackburn Rovers before going on to face Tottenham Hotspur winning 3-1 in the fourth round. We then face Middlesbrough away from home in the quarter final where we come away with a 2-1 victory taking us into the semi-finals where we're drawn against Man City. In the first leg at home we lose 2-1 but in the second leg away we manage to win 2-1 taking us into a penalty shootout. Unfortunately Dato Fofano and Harvey Veal missing the all important kicks as Man City progressed to the final. We start our Champions League campaign with a 2-0 win at home to Inter Milan followed by a 4-1 win at home to RB Leipzig. We continue our good form with an away tie against Racing Club Lawn winning 3-1 before travelling to Galatasaray where we also win 3-1. The next game sees us travel to their Bernabeu where Teo Hernandez missed the opportunity to equalise from the penalty spot in the first half as we come away with a 3-0 defeat. We follow that up with a 2-1 win away to Feyenoord before a surprising 2-1 defeat at home to Krevna Zvezda which is followed by a surprising 1-0 defeat at home to Atalanta. With 5 wins and 3 defeats we managed to finish in 11th place which qualifies us for the knockout playoffs where we take on Krevna Zvezda. In the first leg we win 1-0 away from home and in the second leg we win 7-0 to see us through to the next round. In the next round we face Real Madrid again, this time at home we draw 1-0 but a 1-0 defeat in the Bernabeu sees us knocked out of the competition. Our FA Cup campaign starts with another cup match against Middlesbrough away from home, this time winning 1-0 to see us through to the fourth round, where we take on Brentford coming away with a 3-0 win at home. We face Leeds in the next round, winning 3-0 at home again, seeing us through to the quarter-final where we play Arsenal at home. The game finishes 0-0 in normal time, going through to a penalty shootout, with Martin Odegaard and Bakayo Saka missing the all-important penalties as we progress to the semi-final, where we take on Brighton, winning the game 3-1 to see us into the final. We begin the FA Cup final against Man City, 
as we see Levi Caldwell finds Cavi who hits the ball from about 20 yards off, a good enough goal to win any cup final. Reese James and Caicedo play a 1-2 as James finds Lavia making a break into the box to fire home for 2-0 to Don. And a late Reese James corner is met by Levi Caldwell who heads home to make it 3-0. And so we win our second FA Cup of this rebuild, a great success and not only did we win the FA Cup but winning the league also gives us the league and cup double. Our finances have been very good during this game. We have spent a total of 558 million, with some of those deals potentially taking it up to 597 million. For player sales, we have brought in a total of 604.2 million. And again, some of those deals may rise, bringing a grand total of 645.8 million. Those deals see us make a total net of 48.8 million pound profit. And so that is it for this rebuild. It has been very successful, of course, as we picked up five trophies in the space of three and a half years. We will be back in the future with more rebuilds and please do leave your comments below and let us know who you would like us to do a rebuild for. As always, please like, share and subscribe. Your support is greatly appreciated. We will see you in the next video. Until then, thank you and take care. Thank you for watching this video. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Please do like, share and subscribe and leave your comments below. I'd love to hear your feedback as well. You can check out one of these recommended videos. We will see you in the next one. Thank you and take care.